our topic today, integration between SAP and Planisware. So brief agenda, why integrate? Maybe that's the first question that you should ask yourself. Um, what's the benefit of all that? I give you a short overview of the integration product that we are going to show today. And then I hand over to my colleague Bastian for the live demo, which is the more exciting part probably for today. If we talk about integration, it's really not about putting data into one system and transferring it into another. It's really about integration of processes. And that's the real benefit of it, because if we look into what our customers usually do in their project portfolio and resource management, we have different roles involved from a portfolio manager down to project management teams and controlling, for example, there's a project life cycle starting with the initiation. Product ideas and product requests usually are collected and need to be prioritized. So this could be strategic value or business value or whatever might be the reason. And in many of these, let's say, product requests and ideas, a high level planning is necessary, which could be a planning maybe at project phase level or, or a rough work package level. In the end, here we have the first connection point to ERP or controlling. Because if you think about what a project structure means, it's on one hand uh, working set for the project manager to build a uh, schedule but it's also for controllers the environment where they control the cost from the planning side and also from the actual side so a product structure is something that is needed now we have the first options the product structure could start on the ppm side the green one and be transferred into the erp system that's exactly what we're going to show later in the live demo or it could start on the ERP side in controlling and they define a project structure, hand it over to project management and ask the project managers to do their high level planning against this cost breakdown structure, which is really what let's say controllers usually think in. So with all that being said, we come to a portfolio decision, which means new projects are now being planned in a higher level of detail. We go into detail planning phase, so we set up the real schedule. There might be a distributed planning between projects and teams, depending on the resource management process in place, but that's not the topic for today's meeting. And usually this leads to an update of the project structure because things are starting to change. In the end, the resource planning, again, is a usually um, two-step process where we have a coordination between the teams with the resources and the project managers with the content and the scope. Finally, this leads to a cost planning. Resources are not for free. So all the secondary cost um, comes into the game, driven by rates and everything else, but also primary cost for anything that needs to be purchased for the project. And again, this is a very essential information now for the controllers and the ERP systems that want to know what is the current forecast of the product? What are they planning against? And this helps me to then define a top-down budget again for the project. And this can be again two sides of an equation. A detailed cost planning leads to a high level budget that then is saved into a baseline and compared against. The project executes all the other things that needs to be done and goes into the artifacts like risks, issues, um, stakeholder management and everything else. And finally, we are starting our project, which means we will have actual values. This usually is actual hours tracked by the team members. This could happen on the PPM side, which is most, let's say, uh, what happens in our customer environments. But a number of them also track actuals in the ERP side in SAP CATS, for example, the cross application timesheet, which allows our customers to have the team members track um, actual cost for projects, but also for cost centers, for example. And the project actual cost, of course, needs to be synchronized down into the project schedules to update the project and give the project manager a good insight on where they are. Additional cost, primary cost, for example, from invoices and purchases comes on top of it, is usually captured on the ERP side and transferred down into the project. Again, something we will show on the live demo later on. With all that being said, we have a rolling forecast and the budget on the ERP side. We can create all the reports that we need on the project management side and can go into a, can now go into a portfolio controlling that allows us full insight into planning and actuals. So processes involve data and the integration that we are going to show now is really taking into account these two different aspects um, of integration. 
We will show this with our integration product TBGPS Link. Actually, the reason why we founded the company 25 years ago to build the first integration between then the Microsoft Project Client and SAP, now we can integrate many, many different systems. And that's basically what's happening in an integration landscape. In our world, in TPG's world, the PPM systems live in the middle. This can be a project online, this can be a project server, it can be Planisware Orchestra, Planisware Enterprise, which is what we will show live today. On the left hand side, we have the upward stream into the ERP systems. And on the right hand side, we have the downward stream into the work management systems like in Azure DevOps, Abasana, for example, Jira, and many others where the execution of project takes place. And now every single arrow in here means this is a possible integration use case where we transfer a part of the data from one system into the other to get the processes again integrated and involved to offer team members the possibility to track against Jira work items that belong to a project in Planisware Enterprise that reports back into a project in SAP PPS with a corresponding WBS structure. So really here we have the full chain of processes integrated which also means data are being integrated. PSLink itself is a modular concept. It's an integration product, a software on its own, consisting of a framework and different connectors because not every customer needs everything. So you can just, let's say, purchase the things that you need. And every dashed line in here represents a connection between PSLink and a target slash source system. Of course, there's a user account behind and the password, there's authorization behind. So we can only do the things that the service account is allowed to do in SAP, for example, or in Planisware or in SharePoint. So at the end of the day, there needs to be data that is being read, for example, from Planisware. It somehow managed the data and maybe changed even, and then it's sent into SAP to create a new project over there. How does PSLink know what needs to be done? This is defined in so-called integration jobs. An integration job is a human readable script that our consultants build together with our customers. And this defines exactly what I just described. It means connect to Planisware Enterprise, get this project with this project number, read the corresponding WBS elements that have a check mark, add maybe some data, filter some data, whatever is needed, and then transfer it into SAP to create a new product with the WBS elements um, on the right hand side. Again, we will see all this in the live environment later. And just to get a better understanding of what's happening in detail, I'll show, let's say, a rough scheme, how, let's say, an integration use case could work. Before that, uh, as we have been doing this integration for a long time now, especially with SAP, um, we have been successful in achieving a certification by SAP for the last 14 years, where SAP is looking into our product and the technology that we're using and confirms that we are doing the right things right. Yeah, so this gives, let's say, some credibility and also opens the door when we talk to, let's say, IT departments and security officers um, that the product itself is, let's say, in the scope of what SAP foresees for an integration. Integration, what does it mean finally? Right hand side, we have a PPM tool, Planisware Enterprise in this case, or Planisware Orchestra, which works exactly the same way. Uh, we do not show it live today due to time constraints, but uh, we can do it on another way. And I think we even have a recording for that available on the website where you can look into the orchestra integration. On the left hand side, we today integrate into SAP, but it could be any of the other systems out there as I have described before. In a nutshell, PSLink, is a middleware, a separate piece of software that integrates project management with financial and other systems. Why? To simplify the project management process. Simplification means we have a consistency of information and we eliminate multiple entry of data. The data can flow in both directions, which we just call multi-directional flow of data. And of course, we do not have to reinvent the wheel yeah, because we have all done all these integration use cases many, many times. And we basically can just take a template, for example, for the use cases that we will see today. We adapt it maybe because you have different field names and you have different business rules for the integration, but there is nothing that needs to be coded. There is no software written when we go in integration. We just configure PS Link in these integration jobs to do the right integration yeah, use case. Use case 
let me show you one of them. We synchronize project and WBS structure with SAP. So we start in the PPM tool and we have an SAP system out there and we have TPGPS link in the middle. Now we start with the project on the left hand side in Planisware Enterprise. One example, it could also be the other way around. But let's start on Planisware Enterprise. We create a new project. We're using some user attributes to define which parts of my schedule should be transferred to SAP when I press a button. So now I press a button and ask PS Link to create the project on the SAP side. This creates a new project. We get the new product definition, the TPG 499. We bring it back into um, Planisware and we calculate the WBS numbers, for example. Then we are going to upload the WBS elements on the SAP side. Now we have structure identity between the project schedule on the left hand side and SAP PS on the right hand side. Um, of course the whole story as I said before could have started on the right hand side only and transfer it to the left the PPM tool and then we add the levels below like the task in this example. The same structure in project schedule and in SAP PS looks attractive, but for project managers it's usually not what they want. They want to have a project structure that works by phases or by work packages or some higher level of information that adds, helps them to run their schedule. And of course we have flexibility in how we are synchronizing these two. Let's again start with a new um, product schedule on the left hand side and we use the same infrastructure here. And now we say my project looks different. I have two phases, I have tasks below the phases and I assign, for example, a field called company code to determine where the plan cost for this individual task should end up on the SAP side. So now if I, let's say, create a new project, again, I do mostly the same thing and retrieving my SAP project number, but now I'm calculating the WBS structure on the right hand side based on the information in my schedule on the left hand side. So complete flexibility in terms of as a project manager I can run my project schedule as I want to and as a controller I still have the full picture and the full insight into the plan cost of the individual um, project details on the schedule side. So with all that being said, enough on the PowerPoint side, uh, we now go into the live demo and I take this opportunity to hand over to Basti for the live demo. I will uh, take you through the, let's say, practical part of this presentation. I will give you a live demo. And what I will do today is I will switch different roles and I hope I can explain everything <laughs> what I'm doing. I am actually now in the role of a project manager. And I'm working with Planisware Enterprise, and that is what you also already can see. So I have my Planisware Enterprise in here, and I will start a project, I will schedule a project, and I will interact this project with SAP. Um, as again, what I was um, telling you in the beginning, this is just one possibility of everything. Um, that basically means. Um, yeah, I will do something with WBS elements. This is what I also said in the beginning, but it's just one use case. And uh, we have the possibility with PS Link to actually do a lot of different use cases. Now, that's just to keep in mind. Okay, but now let's actually start with the demonstration. As I said, uh, I am a project manager here, and here we can also see a few projects that we are working on. And I have actually created one project. This is the project Ghost Train because we want to build a roller coaster ghost train today. Now, what I did for this is <clears throat> I have already built a little bit of a structure. That means um, we have, we can see some tasks here. So that means we need to maybe do some research. Um, we have a <clears throat> research testing lab, for example, where we need to, I don't know, do something with velocity and, and stuff like that. We have an execution phase where we first of all build a little bit of a prototype to see if that's working and then we can build the final product. And we have also a tender phase where we maybe have some travel time, uh, travel time we need to go on site have to have a look at, at the location. We need to write a specification for this and also a kickoff meeting. I also made some 
planning. So that means um, I have also planned some work and some costs in here. Um, sorry, I need to make this a little bit bigger than we can see it. So for example, we have some service costs of 1,500 euros. We need to do some training of 25 days. Um, we have our prototype, for example, where we need a developer for uh, 30 days and stuff like that. I will come later on a bit more into the planning. For now, we want to deal with the structure because this is what we were showing you before in these two use cases. We also need to build this structure in SAP. And for this, I'm going to do the exact same thing that we saw in the first use cases on the slides, because what you can see here is here's a column that is called SAP Create WBS. That means with this column, I can say which elements do I want to have transferred over to SAP and which not. So for example, I start and I say, oh, I want to have my research phase. And I went, for example, I want to have my complete tender phase, but I don't care about the execution phase maybe now. So that means maybe later on, I <clears throat> want to care about this execution phase and then I can add them and still transfer them to SAP or whatever. But for now, I don't want to have this at present safe. And there's one little thing I'd like also to show you before we transfer the data. That is when I go here into properties, we have also created on project level some properties that are actually needed when we do a transfer with SAP. So we see here a column that is called an applicant and a responsible and a project profile. We don't need to go into all of that detail. These, let's say, are just fields that are required for an SAP integration here. And that's also something that can look very, very different in your system because you have maybe other required fields or you have other fields you want to synchronize. For now, this is a very simple use case and that should be it for the synchronization. Now, this is one thing I am pretty sure Thomas talked about this extensively, but um, how do we actually start a synchronization? Well, there are basically three different possibilities. Um, the first possibility is that we do an automated schedule. That means um, no one has to push a button or anything like this. We can say, okay, for example, every night or every hour or just every weekend, depending on which schedule fits, we want to synchronize the data. Now, if we want to do this every hour or every night, we could wait a very long time here and that's one, not what we want to do. So basically I will push a button and there we still have two possibilities. The first possibility is, and that's what I'm starting to show you, is we have an own tool that is called uh, PSLink standalone client where I can execute the different use cases. So I don't have actually to open my planners where anything like this, I can just start the integration or the other third use case. And that is also what I'm going to show you a little bit in a few minutes is that I can directly start it from my planners where project without me doing anything. For now, I want to do this with my a standalone client here. As I said, this is the possibility, so I don't need to have opened my plan as well, and that's why I also have to select a project here. I'm going to select this ghost train um, project. And basically what happens is what we, the same thing what we dis, uh, yeah, explained to you in the first uh, steps, the interface went to SAP, said, okay, um, I want to create a project. We already get a project number back. And that's when, what we see here. When I click on the ghost train, we already got a project definition. This is a project number from SAP that was calculated by SAP. And the interface now tells me what it wants to do based on the rules that we have created. So for example, it wants to create a project definition in SAP with all of that fields in here. Then we want to create WBS elements. And I can also check all of that fields that should be created. Same goes for the SAP milestones. That means um, the interface is not a black box doing something. No, you as a project manager have the full control to see what uh, the interface will do. And every time you have the possibility to say, okay, no, please don't synchronize. I want to synchronize another task. I've made a mistake, whatever it may be. So you can then change this. However, 
when everything is fine, we can just let the interface run and we get a success message that um, the project was then ex actually created in SAP. But it was not only created in SAP. Let me go back to the properties in here and we will see that the column of the SAP project definition with the number 202 is now filled because this was created by SAP or let's say calculated by SAP and we wrote this information back and not only here but when I now go back to my gun chart we also see that all of these WBS numbers are here in the tasks and we also see yeah the, the milestone numbers are a little bit different they they look a little bit different sap but basically these are also the um, identification numbers we have for sap and this is a very very important part and also one of the concepts that we have for ps link basically um <clears throat> we or let's say the integration does not want to store any additional information. It, um, it does not have its own data. So for example, the information that, that these research testing lab task from Planisware is connected to some WBS element is not stored within the interface. It is stored in the system. So it is stored here in Planisware and it is stored in SAP. So that means you can I don't know, shut down the uh, integration software for a few days and later on call it back up again and it will work again because we do not have our own data that we have to uh, dangle with. No, this is all stored in the systems. But uh, we said we created something in SAP and I'm just still in uh, Planisware, so please uh, let me quickly go into SAP. I use my the project builder in here and I need to open the uh, project that we created. It has the project number N minus TPG 0202 was the created project number. And we see this is the ghost train that we are actually in preparation of. And we also see that only the um, hierarchy that we wanted to have from Planisware is here. So we have the research phase, we have the tender phase, but the execution phase is not yet there. Maybe you want to create it later on. For now, it's okay that we have all this information here. And when I can uh, click on all this information and get more of this, so for example, here we see again the responsible, that was Bradley and the application, which was HuntBob. We see or we saw that information uh, before in Planis where we can also go to, for example, the user fields. This is now some internal information of Planis where, and we can uh, check the dates and we will basically see the same dates that we have in Planis where here. So that means we can execute um, and synchronize the structure. And as I said, there are many different ways for structures, networks, activities, uh, material components, internal orders, and many, many more. If I want to show you everything today, that would be a little bit of a problem because we are still sitting here uh, in the middle of the night and I don't think uh, that we want to do this. You want to go home later on and <laughs> have a nice evening, I guess. Um, however, what we did now is we created a structure in Planisware and synchronized it to SAP. There is also the way around possible. <clears throat> that means um, we can change things in SAP and synchronize them back. Now, this is always a question, of course, is this feasible? Do we want to do that? Because basically, um, when it comes to integration, one of the concept is that there should be one leading system for a specific, let's say, type of data for a specific field. So for example, you say, oh no, the creation of WBS elements shall be, for example, in SAP. And later on, we only want to change the dates from Planisware or vice versa or something like this. However, I want to show you really um, that we can synchronize the structure in both ways because to be honest, 50% uh, of our customers or roughly 50% starting in SAP and 50% uh, starting in the PPM tool. And so both of these use cases are always some kind of important. And that is why I want to change something here in the project first. Um, 
And I want to start with the status. Um, you can see here, this is the system status. It's called CRTD. For every one of you who is not familiar with SAP, that means basically created. So this WBS element was just created. However, if we later on want to change something, if we want to do planning on this or something like this, we uh, need to change the status. We need to release it. And that's what we are going directly in SAP. I just click here, say release and the status has been changed to release. Now let me do some more changes. Let's say our research testing lab has moved because we are now using the lab on floor number two, something like this. And last but not least, I want to have a new milestone within the tender. So I go here, say create a new milestone. For example, we need uh, to approve the travel time for whatever reasons. Um, and this should be done quite quickly. So the finish date, let's say, should be tomorrow. Um, just enter the date in here, press in, save, and we have a new milestone. Everything that I want to show you here is that we can also do changes in SAP. Let me save this real quick, and then I will um, get back into Planisware. I'm still in the role of the project manager now, <clears throat> and I want to update my project. I'm still doing this with uh, this client here. So I'm executing basically the second use case for today. This is update my Planisware project from SAP. I select again my ghost train project. Nope, that's also this click, sorry, here we go. And what we will see again is the same window that we had before, and it will tell me what it will change. Now you see also, or you get a glimpse of what happens in the background. We calculate really the changes. So for example, for Ghost Train, only the status changes. For this WBS element, only the name has changed. And we can see the name before was Research Testing Lab, and now it is Research Testing Lab Floor too. So that means we do not update everything or do not write everything. No, we calculate basically what are the updates, what are, uh, what do we need to do? And we also have a creation of a new milestone that we want to do. Just let me press an OK so it can create everything in the background. And then we'll have the data in the system. Now I'll go first to properties again, and we see that the project status has now filled. Now I have the information that this project is now released and I can do uh, continue with the next use case and do my planning. But before this, let us check this task. We see that the name has been changed to research testing lab floor number two, and we see this milestone is now also created, the approval travel time. <clears throat> that really means we can create, update, and change the structure in both systems and synchronize it with the other. As said in the beginning or showed you with the slides, there are many, many more different use cases possible, but um, that should be, let's say, the structure synchronization for this demo purpose. However, that's not it because this is only the structure. And the structure is, let's say, somehow the basis um, of everything because now what we want to do is we want to do a little bit of a planning. I already said that I did something like this, but let's have a look at this. So what I did mm, is I created, for example, for this research testing lab, already some service costs. I have a resource behind with the training and <clears throat> for down here with the specification and the travel time, I've also made some um, some planning. So for example, here we have the travel time, we need uh, 1,200 euros for the travel time. And for the consulting, we also have additional five days. Now, this is basically just the planning that I did. I don't really know who is going to do the task. I just know I need a consultant. That's a generic resource, but this consultant, has a rate and the rate multiplied by this five days or basically respectively 40 hours is also a cost. And that cumulated together, together with this primary cost that we have in here. So basically talking in SAP terms, the 1,200 is the primary cost and this five euro then a secondary cost. We have already done a financial planning of our project and not only in summary to say 
well, for this WBS element, I need 1,200 uh, euros of primary cost. No, we have it also in a time-faced manner because I don't care that I don't need uh, that I need, for example, 1,500 euros. I want to know when do I know them. Uh, when, sorry, when do I need them? So, for example, this tasks, if we have a look at it, um, just a minute, we open this. This task has a planned start in April, but has an expected finish in May. So that means some of the costs are expected to be to be happen in April, and some of these costs are um, expected to happen in May. And that is what I want to see because that is the real interesting part when it comes to financials. And actually, just by planning these uh, things, I can synchronize this to SAP. <clears throat> but before I can do this, I just want to show you how can I do this. Well, here we have already WBS elements. That's easy. So we know where is the, in SAP, it's called a sign, uh, account assigning element, so to say. But we need some more information because what is the service costs and all of that? Uh, just let me give you a glimpse in the administration and the background. So, for example, here we see the costs accounts. And what we did is we enhanced the cost account by information from SAP. So, for example, um, this is a uh, cost element uh, in SAP so that SAP knows, okay, this is service cost, this is material cost, and this is travel cost. And basically the same as also we did for the resources. So, resources know their cost center and their activity type. And with all of these information, SAP can work with the data we are going to send them. Now, before I transfer the data, you may ask, well, wait a second, um, how is this data coming into your system? Well, there are two possibilities. Either you do it manually or, <laughs> well, you have an integration. So basically, your resources are already in an HR system. This can be SAP, but it can be a different uh, HR system, Personio or whatever. And then you can synchronize these data and have automatically all the information on your resources and everything you need here to transfer the primary and secondary costs back to SAP. Enough with the talking. Let's show this. Um, I'm going to execute the third use case now, again, choosing my ghost train project. <clears throat> and uh, I will get a little bit of a different window here. Um, in one second, yes, here it is. I get a little bit of a different window, as I said in the beginning. And let's have a look just at the cost tasks here. And we see that we have some information, for example, for this research testing lab. And I just want to show this in here. Oh, sorry, that's a little bit small, but we see that we have the value of 1,500. That's what we see here in the background. The value of 1,500 is distributed by year and by month. So that means we know that 375 euros we um, have planned in April and 1,125 are planned in May. So that also we see this information in here. I don't want to go into too much of that detail right now because you're already used to these screens. And let's just see the result in SAP. I'm going to use the transaction CJ40 for this, going to my cost planning in here. <clears throat> and yeah, let's do this one. Uh, I will open my primary costs in here. This is the primary cost planning. I'm sorry for this very, very, very long list. This is how SAP presents me the data. Um, I now need to scroll a little bit actually to find my 1,500 euros of service costs. We see this is the same cost element number that we saw actually before. And when I have a detailed look, I see that here, are exactly the same costs in April and in May um, for this project. And now you can actually get, a, get an idea of how easy it is to make a financial planning because you already have it in your PPM system because you already had laid it out over the timeline. Of course, you can also get all the other information. Let's say we want to check the activity input here. These are the work. So these are 40 hours. If we just have a look at this. Yeah, here we have uh, five days and the five days are spread out to eight hours of working per, uh, per day. 
Um, if I just have a check here, these are all in April because this task starts in April and also finishes in April. But the interesting part is that we have planned cost of it because SAP knows um, from the cost center and the activity type that these are also planned costs. And now we also have here, one second, in this overview, the total of planned costs and not only the hours. We know now how many is uh, do we need for our project? How many do we have planned for our project? Now, in the current stage where we are in of this project, um, it is all, let's say, simple <laughs> because we just did planning. And planning is always the simple part of a project. The hard part of a project is when let's say reality hits it because you do a nice planning you and everything looks nice but when the reality comes so when you get your actual data then it when it gets when it gets interesting because um yeah you plan for example here 1200 euros but how many do you still have how many should you have and things like that but if you want to answer some of these questions you need to know what are my actuals and now that's why I'm going uh, for uh, in SAP this time, and I'm uh, going to book some actuals because this is ma mainly the, let's say, domain in SAP. Um, I'm going to switch to this transaction, and I just uh, want to post some costs. So for example, I need to also present a cost element. I'm using my travel expenses in here. Let's say we want to uh, post 800 euros for something, again, PPG01 as a cost center, and I need to provide a WBS element. And let's say we go here to this uh, travel time. I just press on post, and on the left side down here, you see a document was posted. So this is uh, the, the single uh, element in SAP, and it has the number 751, something like this, in uh, at the end. So that means, um, however, these costs are basically entered in SAP. This doesn't matter. It can be automatically by, I don't know, whatever. I just do it manually here so you can also see it. Um, but now, again, back in my role as a project manager, I want to update my project. And now for this use case, I'm going to show you not the client, what I was using before, but I'm showing you that I can directly do this from my planners where project in here. Um, if you're familiar a little bit with Planisware, you uh, are familiar with this uh, tabs uh, up in the begin up, up here, and you see that there's something new. It's called uh, TPG PS Link, and this is basically where, for example, you could start the integration. So I'm already in my project, and when I click on this, I get the exact sorry for this, <laughs> I get the exact same use cases that we had before. So uh, synchronizing the project structure in both directions. Last but not least, I only want to import my actuals from SAP. And what happens is um, the integration is basically called. Um, it's ask what is in SAP, what is actually in Planisware, and then the actuals are also created in Planisware. Now, what we see here is that the job has been started, but we just wait a little bit. So I think it's five or 10 seconds, the number that we wait. And if the job hasn't continued, it will uh, say, okay, um, it hasn't continued. Um, please come back later. Um, and then maybe it is, it is already finished, but I don't want to stop you from working. So basically I can work now in here. And if I want to know if it is finished, I can go to something that I also wanted to show you. And this is the PS link lock in here. So basically everything you start, you can see here. And now you see this job has an execution result of success. It normally takes about 11 to 12 seconds, something like this. Now we ex exceeded the time span. It's also a little bit um, yeah, dependent on, let's say, how many traffic is on the network and something like this. However, we see that the job is finished. And when I go back to my gun chart, I see that he, he, I now have 800 euros of actual costs in here. And I can go on this and get all of the detail. I even get this document number that we saw in the beginning from SAP. Question is, of course, is this 
um, a good idea to have all the document numbers in here. Maybe you just want to have a summary, maybe on a category or something like this. Um, but yeah, as I said, it is the possibility to have all of the detailed information in here to see when does this actual have happened and everything that needs to come along with that. <clears throat> and now I am, as a project manager, have the possibility to react on this. This is where the work of a project manager actually comes in. So now I can see, okay, I have planned 1,200 euros, 800 euros are spent. Is this okay for the time being? Do I need more budget? Maybe I don't need anything, maybe everything is fine, but now I can actually start my work. And now I have the information and when I need to talk to someone else, we all talk about the same piece of information because we have it in our systems. The controller has this scene in SAP. I have it here in Planis where we have the same data, we have the same information and we can now actually steer my project. I can change it here. And then, for example, I can synchronize it back to SAP and the circle starts over and over and over. That is actually everything what I wanted to show you for today. Um, as I said in the beginning, there are a lot of more use cases which I could show you, but this should give you an idea of how it can look like of some of the use cases um, <clears throat> that are, let's say, available. Um, just as a little bit of a summary, summary we um, first tackled the project structure, we created it in Planisware and then moved it to SAP, changed something in SAP, get the information back. Um, we made a planning in Planisware and transferred this time phase to SAP and we also, uh, last but not least, get back the actual data from SAP.